Welcome to a new episode of our MBSE podcast. So where Christian and I talk about topics around MBSE. If you want to learn more about us, visit our website, mbse-podcast.rocks and uh, or follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and Twitter. Today, we have another episode from our series MBSE Around the World, uh, in which we visit a country to visit um, and to find out how MBSE is used there. And in the past, we have been visiting uh, the UK, uh, mm -hmm. China, um, mm -hmm. or Sweden. And this time, we visit another Nordic country. We talked to Rico Salminen about MBSE in Finland. So Rico, welcome, and it's great that you are here, and please introduce yourself. Good evening, and um, thank you for inviting me to, to this podcast, and of course, welcome to Finland. So um, my name is Rico Salminen, and uh, I'm an engineering management consultant, and uh, my company, uh, SUSE, uh, is uh, providing training and consultancy services, uh, mainly here in Finland for, for my customers, for my Finnish customers, companies, and, and also other organizations. And, and the services are very much based on systems engineering principles, methods, and tools. And uh, my background is from defense domain. Um, I've worked many years uh, for, the, for the defense material command for the, of the Finnish Defence Forces, uh, and nowadays uh, people know that that organization as a logistics logistics command. So new name, but uh, but uh, I, I think that most most the same organization. And uh, I, I had a very unique opportunity at that time uh, to, to to spend one year at. Uh, uh, at studying systems engineering uh, and master of science degree in systems engineering in in, in Cranfield University, UK, and and uh, that was uh, that was a lot of work, but uh, but I have to say that I I, I learned a lot, and and uh, I think that that's probably the reason why why I'm, I'm I'm doing what I'm doing at the at the moment. So so uh, that's that's was probably some kind of uh driver or or major uh, milestone in my in my life and of course in, in my career and uh after that i i continued working for the finnish defense forces for the procurement projects uh and uh, and also with the with the life cycle support of defense equipment and um after some years uh there i i Took a position at the, the other side of the table, as, as as you could say. So I I I started to work for the for the defense industry. So I it was uh, also a good opportunity to see see the other other way of of, of uh, defense projects and, and and learn learn the the industry side and, and maybe that has been the that's the the side that I have been mainly working since and and the last eight years I have been working as a as a as a consultant and and and, and trainer within my own mm -hmm. own company say. okay thank you and welcome also from my side Rico um yeah when I think of Sweden uh, of Sweden yeah <laughs> uh, when I think of Finland I'm thinking of wood and i'm thinking of nokia so can you tell us what are the typical industries in finland and which of those are already used to use uh, systems engineering or even model-based systems engineering um yes we a long time ago we we used to say that finland lives from forests so so uh we we had a big part of our export coming from wood and and, and paper industry so that's that's probably a, a still and and it is still somewhat but uh, in, in general i think that the 
the role of paper industry has has been reducing quite a lot lot in Finland. And uh, another traditional um, industry area has been, uh, and it, it still is, it's shipbuilding. So so uh, there was uh, some years ago a little bit uh, down uh, time for for the shipbuilding, but I think again there are there are uh, big shipbuilding companies, and 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 that's that has been has been a, a, a big uh, industry area. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, Nokia was probably a, a a big changer in the in in the Finnish industry. So especially in in 1990s when 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 i when i graduated or, or at first started at the end of 80s and, and, and graduated at 1990s so nokia was was very big player and big employer for 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 the for the people here in finland and uh, and those mobile phones and 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 the networks they were they they kind of uh, build up uh, kind of this kind of modern technology industry uh, and especially electrical industry that that we still have of of course it's a much a group of much smaller companies but i think the the people that that uh, were were trained and 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 uh, worked worked in at nokia are are now working for many other companies so so mm. that has been of course had a major impact on 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 Finnish industry about mm -hmm. systems engineering and and uh, and uh, model based systems engineering i i think that uh, it has been mainly uh, the the traditional area of of systems engineering which is in in many countries defense industry that is also the same in finland so that uh, mm -hmm. that also the the customer, the, the Finnish Defense Forces, and and of course the other other customers for the for the Finnish Defense Industry, they are they are kind of requiring to to use the uh, systems engineering. So that is that is of course one driver for for the defense industry. And and uh, and lately there has been also interest and and a lot of uh, already implemented systems engineering methods and tools in 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 the nuclear nuclear power domain so so mm -hmm. personally also i have been working there there as a as a consultant so i have mm -hmm. seen that uh, they are they are really really putting some effort effort on 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 that part and some other domains uh, i know healthcare uh, mm -hmm. technology companies they they are doing some 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 systems engineering but uh, but in, in 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 general i think that um, that uh, we we have still still quite a lot to do in Finland for 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 improving the the the, the awareness and, and knowledge of systems engineering. And uh, what would you estimate how well then is model based systems engineering used in in Finland? Uh, yeah, I I think or this is my 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 personal view. I I mm -hmm. I, I don't I I'm not claiming that I I'm aware of all all activities of all, all all Finnish companies that's not possible but uh, but uh, it seems that uh, the Finnish industry has not yet been adapting systems engineering to their way of of, of work or model based systems engineering to their way of, way of work uh, I, I know that uh, in in the Finnish academia or universities there are uh research, research uh, done in the area of model based systems engineering and and mm -hmm. uh, i know that some companies have been been evaluating uh, the possibilities of of model based systems engineering but as i said my current understanding is that model based systems engineering is not currently used in in in, in that much in in, in Finnish companies so and, i don't and, i don't know maybe i'm wrong but but uh, maybe if, <laughs> some, if, if if i'm wrong please please let me know that that i'm wrong and and if, if somebody in the Finnish industry is already using mbs just contact me and, and, and prove absolutely me wrong. Uh, or leave a comment below this video and give us a thumbs up and don't forget 
yeah, uh, to subscribe to this channel to not miss out any other podcast episode. Yeah, uh, Rico, um, do you have any idea why that is, uh, or why you, why, why do you have this feeling that it was evaluated by many but not really applied? Uh, again, this is this is just just a personal personal view, but uh, but I, I think that there might be might be two reasons. Uh, so um, uh, at least my experience, the the in, in many companies and in, in many many industry domains, the system architecture work is is not really up up there yet. So so it is it is uh, not done at all. Of course, you always have some kind of architecture, but, but you, mm -hmm. you might not really be be aware of it or you might not be documenting it or analyzing it and and and, and uh, or or you could just doing partial partial architecture work so some some architecture views especially the kind of uh, specialty engineering areas like uh, like integrated logistics support there you need to do some some of the the, the functional architecture views for for, for for that part but uh, but it could be that the, the those views are not then used for 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 other purposes. Mm -hmm. So it, it in I, I think this is kind of worst case scenario. But in in worst case, you could have different teams in, in the same project uh, developing kind of architecture views, uh, even same view, view that and and ending up with a bit different different uh, results and and not kind of sharing it as a common common view and and uh, and uh, so that might be the reason so without kind of a, uh, an architecture description a good architecture description or at least awareness of how to work with an architecture it might be difficult to start working with them um, with model-based systems engineering i i know that uh, that you could also say that uh, that using model-based systems engineering tools and methods uh, they that could help you to start start doing the architecture work properly mm -hmm. so of course there is that 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 uh, view view also so it could be could be other way around also but, uh, mm -hmm. but that might be that might be one reason and uh, and the second reason is because you you are of course advocates of of model based systems engineering so uh I'm not, I'm not sure if you like this but but uh, it might be that uh, the second reason is the the high level of, of skills needed for using the, the current MBSC methods and tools. So, mm -hmm. so it, it could be that the investment for, for skills is considered too high at the moment. So mm -hmm. it, of course you, you need, need to, need to kind of feel some pain usually before, before you mm -hmm. kind of make a decision for for doing investments, so so uh, whichever, if, if you are doing process development or competence development or or developing methods and tools, so usually usually you have to have big enough a problem before you make the decision that you you make the investment and, and start doing something. So, mm -hmm. it could be that uh, that people are just managing with the or coping with the with the current methods and tools. Yeah, that would be interesting if uh, the, the Finnish companies don't feel the pain or don't have the pain uh, to apply MBSE. So uh, you need a purpose to do MBSE um, and maybe it's not not there or not. Uh, the pressure is not high enough for, for some reasons. That's I think that's quite interesting. Uh, and mm -hmm. of course, the investment is very high <laughs> and it costs time. So it's not, uh, which time is also money, uh, well, but um, yeah, you cannot introduce MBSE methods and tools in a in a single short-term project or so. It costs uh, months or years so, to to really effectively apply it. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, speaking of pain, <laughs> uh, if people work with MBSE, they they also feel some pain, have questions on how to do this, and then they typically organize themselves in working groups or uh, things like this. Uh, so is is there a working group in the local chapter of Encozy, or 
Is there a local chapter of Encosi <laughs> in Finland? Yes, yes, we we have a, a local chapter of of Encosi. Uh, uh, the the Finnish chapter is is called uh, Finse, so Finnish Systems Engineering Association in English, and mm -hmm. and uh, it it's it has been going on quite a long time already, but uh, but uh, we have uh, quite quite a low number of. Of, of members in, in Finse, but uh, but we anyways we have tried to try to organize uh, uh, events uh, uh, some events few events every every year and and uh, and also this topic of model based systems engineering has has been uh, kind of raised by the by the by the members and and mm -hmm. that's that's something that we have been discussing that uh, that we should organize at, at least some kind of of, um, of of event discussing this this topic but at the moment there are no no working groups within within uh, our local local um, chapter and i'm i'm not not really aware of of any other uh finnish organizations or, or that that might have have uh uh, any any kind of interest groups in in model based systems engineering so that that is the that is the current current status as as i know so again if i'm wrong just uh, contact me and, <laughs> and and tell me i'm happy happy to say that i i was wrong okay <laughs> yeah so Christian. Uh, yeah, the, the one <laughs> one area was was that I I, I, I forgot to mention was was this uh, this um, this uh, I I know that there are these um, uh, interest groups or working groups uh, related to to kind of modeling and simulation mm -hmm. in, in general. Mm -hmm. So okay. so uh, so, but to my understanding, they are they are focusing on on uh, domain specific modeling not not mm -hmm. system level modeling so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay okay got it got it um but of those few you know that who are practicing mbse or se um what are the typical challenges for them in finland uh, i i think that um in overall, uh, if you think about uh, the, the, for example, the, the Inkosi, the Finnish chapter of Inkosi here in Finland, the, what 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 is, what is our problem, or 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 my my company as uh, the kind of the, the the business challenges for 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 trying to trying to to promote systems engineering is is the the uh, general. Uh, uh, unawareness of systems engineering here in Finland. So, so that is probably mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the the biggest challenge. That that um, it it is it, it is very difficult to start talking about systems engineering, and people don't have might might not have uh, idea of what what it is. Usually, it's it's they are thinking that it's something related to software. Mm -hmm. and 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 uh, so um uh i i know that there are companies that have good knowledge and skills of systems engineering but but uh, overall it's it has been a challenge to 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 to, to start promoting systems engineering um of course some companies are doing part of part of the um uh, uh, part, parts of systems engineering, but they might call it something else. So that's that's also one way to start discussing about systems engineering. But mm -hmm. um, that is that is probably the challenge, and that is the reason why myself I, I I am not I am not a systems engineering consultant or systems engineering trainer by by name because i i have chosen to use more general term engineering mm -hmm. management mm -hmm. so uh, it's it's okay. probably much easier to 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 kind of understand that if we talk about engineering management of course it's it's not one to one with 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 uh, with systems engineering but i i think it's uh, it has been a little bit easier for using 
using that kind of umbrella. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, the, the challenge for the MBSC, I think it's, it's the general lack of un understanding of systems engineering. So I think that for me, model-based systems engineering is systems engineering. It is kind of methods and tools for doing systems engineering. And, and if, if you don't have kind of the, the, the starting point there, if, if you don't have understanding of systems engineering, then it might be, might be a little bit uh, difficult to, 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 to start, start uh, implementing or even start discussing about model-based systems engineering. So that, mm -hmm. that might be, the, might be the, the biggest challenge for MBSC in Finland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, well, one action to increase the awareness is to talk about systems engineering <laughs> yes, again some... and again. So, um, and well, there's the Nordic Systems Engineering Tour. Uh, uh, last week, uh, the tour was, uh, yeah, we had the tour only virtually. Um, so it was not a real tour, but um, well, you are one of the organizers of the tour um, as part of the Finnish chapter. So can you briefly explain the concept of the tour and report a bit of the tour last week. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, yes, the, um, the Nordic Systems Engineering Tour, I think it's a quite unique concept. Uh, usually when, when you organize conferences, you, you uh, uh, select uh, some kind of a bigger city somewhere and, and, and bring all the speakers and, and, and the audience there. And, and uh, then it took a lot of traveling for, for, the, for the participants and, and uh, it might be quite expensive to, to, to visit this kind of conferences. But for the Nordic Systems Engineering Tour, the concept has been kind of turned uh, around. Mm -hmm. So we, we try to bring the, the speakers to, to the audience. So, so the, the idea of the tour is that, that uh, we select uh, several uh, good speakers, several interesting themes. And, and uh, then we organize a, a kind of conference tour. Uh, for example, lately it has been like starting from, from Helsinki, then to, to Stockholm, then to um, Copenhagen or, or Oslo and, and, uh, and even some uh, year we, we also had Poland and Warsaw as mm -hmm. one of the one of the destinations. So so and and then the, the then the speakers have have the the, the the challenge of of touring around and and then presenting in every every location and and uh, the, the participants have them a little bit less traveling and it's it's easier than for them to participate and also the the cost for participation is is lower and and mm -hmm. of course for us. For, for the Finnish chapter of INCOSI, this has been a very um, good opportunity for for having this uh, this cooperation with the the, the other other INCOSI chapters because we are we are a small chapter as I said and, and it's very difficult for us to organize big events. So this this one is 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 quite easy event for us so that we can we can kind of uh, be part of the. The bigger organization and 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 it, it provides for our members a, a good opportunity to get get uh, speakers all around the world to 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 come to Finland and and present their topics. But uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, this uh, this uh, pandemic situation has been mm. causing some problems. So uh, last year we we had to cancel the the the, the whole tour. And uh, this year we were planning to organize it uh, as a as a as it has been earlier, but uh, then we had to had to uh, make a decision that that uh, okay we cannot make a make a real physical tour if there if there were too too high risks of canceling cancellations and and so on. So we we decided then to have a online event and it was only for usually it's a one day event in every country but it, now it was just one online event where where we had people from 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 different countries and and we had four speakers and and various topics and and uh, 
there were around 100 people uh, joining the, the the conference this year, which I thought was was really really good amount of people, and I I think that there were even people from from countries that are not part of the the tour <laughs> stops regular tour stops. So I think that provided also opportunity for for those people to participate. So I think that yeah. was that was really good. So we had. We had really nice, nice events. So I, I think that uh, even even though we didn't manage to do it as as, as we we planned, so uh, I think the online event was was uh, was still a good good event for 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 us and hopefully mm -hmm. also for the participants. Yeah, and hopefully next year the tour will hit the road again, <laughs> and it will be a real physical tour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm hoping that too. And Christian, you was also part of the tour, right? A yes, years ago. Uh, two years ago, three years ago, yeah. But unfortunately, in this year, we did not have a stop in Finland. We were in Hamburg, Copenhagen, Linköping, and that that was it. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that Finland mm -hmm. became part of the tour only in 2015, so, so we haven't been there from the beginning. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but, uh, so yeah, go on. Yeah, but uh, yeah. as I said, great event for 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 the absolutely Finnish, Finnish uh, in Kosi and and, yeah, and its members. So I, I think that that's uh, that's uh, and we uh, we are hopefully uh, kind of uh, willing to 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 put some effort also for the future years to be part of this 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 event. Yeah, and the tour also supported the, the foundation of the Danish chapter in 2013 or 14 or so. I remember when the tour stopped there, uh, it was during the foundation phase of, of the chapter, and it was very good for them uh, that they had already had a systems engineering event then. And uh, it was the same for the Polish chapter, so it was very mm -hmm. helpful for them. So systems engineering the chapter was very small in Poland or still is, I don't know. Um, and it was also very good for them. I think it was there twice in, in Poland. So. Yeah, it's great. And there's another co uh, tour in uh, Southern Europe, the Southern Europe Systems Engineering Tour. So it's the name. Italy, Spain, <laughs> Italy, Spain, CCR, Italy, Spain, France, and uh, Switzerland. I guess. So, yeah, great. And David Long, I think if I remember it correctly, also tried to copy it in, in the US. There was a Eastern Coast tour. So, oh, uh, East Coast tour. <laughs> yes, I think yeah. something like that. <laughs> yeah, I think that the concept is, is very interesting. And, and as, as we see, there are there are already copies of it. And I think mm -hmm. that it's it's, uh, it's we are very happy that, that people are using the concept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so great. Uh, oh, we, yeah, we have a few minutes left. Uh, so finally, let's talk a little bit more about you, not about Finland and the tour, but uh, about you. So you already told us a bit that you uh, are a consultant. Um, and so w what's your daily job then in systems engineering when you consult a customer? Yes, uh, as, as I said, said that my my studies uh, there at Frankfurt University was kind of a life changer and career changer. So so since then I have been more or less used uh, systems engineering daily in my work and and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, last eight years uh, I have been I have been uh, running this this uh, small small company and and. Uh, and trying to help my my customers uh, with using systems engineering and what i have been doing mainly is i have been working mainly with uh, with uh, with requirements so with stakeholder and system requirements definition and and uh, i have done quite a lot of work for helping to define and and building up processes and and uh, and tools for for requirements and also configuration management which are of course mm -hmm important part when when if when, when you are doing doing um, uh, systems engineering in, in, in general and and of course uh, related processes so so when you work with with requirements as trying to capture the the, the needs and, and 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 requirements so it includes 
also the, the, the architecture work that I, I already mentioned. You work also with the integration, planning of integration activities, and, and of course, at the same time, planning of verification and, and, and validation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm depending on on the needs of the of the customers and and uh, and of course the current phase of the of the life cycle of the system of inter interest whichever whichever system of interest you are working with so mm -hmm. so quite uh, varying scope scope of of consulting consulting um, activities there and and then the other part is is uh, uh, maybe not daily but but weekly activities are, are related then to to these uh, training courses, uh, uh, engineering management training courses, as, as we call them, but uh, but uh, they they are based on very much on, on on systems engineering, systems engineering principles, and and for that it's it's kind of a regular uh, entrepreneur work that I'm trying mm -hmm. to do sales and and marketing of for the courses and 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 practical hands-on stuff for preparing the courses materials and 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 venues and and so on so uh, you can you can do quite varying tasks as a as a mm -hmm. working in a small company mm -hmm. and of course then delivering the courses in either on, online or or hopefully in the future also also again at the classroom it even sounds like it's pretty PLM related, depending on where the customer is at the moment. Yeah, that, that's that's true. Yeah, yeah, I think that uh, that uh, you, you, I, I I always uh, when you talk about uh, the, the, the the kind of the product uh, life cycle product information, I, I, I for for me it's it's every everything is related to configuration management. Mm -hmm. So I. I mm -hmm. I, I, my right. my umbrella term for for that is, but of course you need different different uh, methods and tools for for implementing that that those those configuration management processes and mm -hmm. methods that that right. uh, you are defining. So of course you end up usually working with the with the, with the product data management systems and and, and 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 so on. So that's 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 where you you do the implementation part. Mm -hmm. Okay, so well, I think time is up. Uh, so it was very interesting, Rico. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for joining our podcast. And uh, we got some insights in MBSE systems engineering in general in, in Finland. Um, and now we're we at Sweden, we're in Finland. Now we need Denmark and Norway. Yeah. Mm, then we have the northern <laughs> northern yes. European countries. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. But uh, well, the next topic, uh, the next episode is not MBSE around the world. Um, next time we look on a, a framework, the Unified Architecture Framework (UAF), and our guest will be Aurelius from Dassault who is one of the masterminds behind uh, UAF, um, which is developed and maintained by the OMG. And we already have this time, we have a date. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's uh, October the 15th, so in around three weeks, no? uh, around yeah. three weeks. Um, yeah, so I hope you join us uh, same time, um, well, seven o'clock uh, Central European time. Yeah, and then, well, Christian, no, do not forget. Trust us. We are systems engineers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Bye -bye.